IXL section BB2 characteristics of quadratic functions equations this IXL is very similar to BB1 you're basically gonna be answering the same questions that they gave you in BB1 but the difference is that in this IXL you're gonna be answering the questions by looking at the equation that they are giving you and finding the answer using the equation that they are giving you now I have all of the examples grouped by the type of question that's being asked and for every group I have in red what you have to do okay so in red it says what you have to do on every slide so keep that in mind if you get lost or you're not sure what to do so let's start with the first question which is an easy question find the y-intercept of the parabola find the y-intercept of the parabola how do I find the y-intercept okay look at what I wrote in red to find the y-intercept, make x equal to 0 and solve for y. That's always how you find the y-intercept. You make x equal to 0 and solve for y. Okay, así que aquí tenemos que encontrar el y-intercept del parábola. ¿Cómo se encuentra el y-intercept? Siempre se hace la misma cosa. Se hace x igual a 0 y resolvemos para y. All right, so look at our first example. Look how easily you could do this. If x equals 0, then the y-intercept is just this number right here. You don't have to do anything. There's your answer. The answer is right here. Ahí está la respuesta. Let's look at it again because this is an important thing to realize. I've seen this type of question on the Algebra 1 EOC, and it's so simple. Again, to find the y-intercept, you make x equal to 0. If x equals 0, 0 to the second power is 0, so I could erase that. And solve for y. Well, y is already by itself. So y equals negative 31 over 10. That is the y-intercept. Look how easy that is. Let's look at this one. You know what's the y-intercept? Boom. Right here. Be because if I make x equal to 0 here and here, all of this will cancel out, and the answer is 4. You get what I'm trying to say? Let's see. What's the y-intercept here? Right here. Boom. The y-intercept is 3. I hope you guys see how absolutely easy that is. Okay? Quiero que, que se den cuenta de que fácil es eso. Cuando está la ecuación cuadrática en esta forma, solamente, si hacemos todos los x igual a 0, el y-intercept es simplemente el constante, el número que está solo, que no tiene un variable. All right, so if you make all the x's equal to 0, the y-intercept is always this number that's by itself back here. Whoops. All right, that is a piece of cake. I don't want any anybody saying that that's difficult. Let's look at some more examples, all right? So look at this one. What is the y-intercept here? If I make x equal to 0, what number is back here? Oh, there's nothing back there. If there's nothing back there, that's the same as having this back there, isn't it? The y-intercept is 0. Okay, si no hay nada aquí atrás, eso quiere decir que aquí atrás se puede, estar, se puede escribir más 0. Así que el y-intercept es cero. For anybody that's lost, if by any chance anybody's lost, if I make x equal to zero, that means I have this. When I work that out, zero to the second power is zero. Minus four times zero is zero. So the y-intercept is zero, in case you're confused. Okay, si alguien está confundido, eso es lo que quiere decir cuando hago x igual a cero y resuelvo para y. All right, so the y-intercept here is zero. On this one, same thing. Y equals x squared. So y equals 0 to the second power when I, when I substitute 0 for x. So the y-intercept is 0. Again, if you're not sure what to do, I wrote in red what you have to do. Aquí en rojo te dice que es lo que tiene que hacer para coger la respuesta. All right, look at the last one. If I, if I make x equal to 0, that means it will say y equals 0 squared plus 8. So when I simplify that, y equals 8. Do you have to write this? Of course not. I'm just writing it for anyone that may be lost. But the y-intercept is just this number back here. Okay, el y-intercept de este número que está aquí atrás. Si hacemos x igual a 0. All right, that should be very simple. Hopefully everybody gets it because that is super important to know. Again, I've seen many questions on exams and in particular on the Algebra 1 EOC just like that where the answer is right in front of your face. You don't have to do anything if you just understand what the y-intercept is. All right, let's look at the next group of questions. 
The next group of questions involves finding the axis of symmetry. Remember that the axis of symmetry is this line that divides the parabola in half, okay? Now, here's the deal. On these problems, you got to do more work, all right? When they, give it, when they give you the problem in the form of an equation, you have to use this formula to find the axis of symmetry. In fact, everybody needs to memorize this formula before your exams because they are not going to give you these formulas on the exam, all right? So believe it or not, this is a formula you should definitely memorize. And after you use it two or three times, it should be no problem to memorize it once you use it two or three times. Trust me. Okay, but everybody should definitely memorize this formula because we're going to use it on a lot of questions. So the axis, to get the axis of symmetry, you got to do x equals negative b over 2a. I'll demonstrate how to use it right now. Okay, pero esta es una formula que definitivamente deben memorizar porque se usa mucho. Okay, y esta formula no se lo van a dar en los exámenes. Después que lo usan dos, tres o cuatro veces, lo van a tener memorizado. Okay, así que no es difícil memorizar. Okay, ahora le voy a enseñar problemas que usan esta fórmula. All right, so in all these examples, we got to find the, the equation of the axis of symmetry. Again, in red, it tells you what to do. Okay, now remember that I said that the, um, a quadratic function can be written in this form. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. I'm going to erase that, so make sure you look at it for a second, okay? A is the number that's in front of X squared. B is the number that's in front of X to the first power. And C is the constant, the number that's by itself with no variable. Okay, recuerden que yo dije que una función cuadrática se puede escribir en esta forma. A es el número al frente de X a la 2. B es el número al frente de X a la 1. Y C es el constante que está aquí atrás, el número que no tiene un variable. <clears throat> okay, so with that in mind, let's look at our first example. Here's our first example, el primer ejemplo. In this example right here, what's A? A is the number in front of X squared. There's nothing there, so that means there's an invisible one. What's B? B is negative 6. And what's C? C is 0, because there's nothing back here. What I mean is this. This is Y equals X squared minus 6X. There's nothing here, so that's the same as writing plus 0. Okay, now it's written in the same form as this, what I was just telling you. I'm not going to keep writing this, so make sure you're paying attention and you understand what I'm saying, okay? <clears throat> Pon atención porque no voy a seguir escribiendo esto. Así que A es el número que está al frente de X a la 2. Si no hay nada, es, es, es entendido que hay un uno invisible ahí. Así que A es igual a 1. B es este número, negativo 6. Y C es el número que está aquí atrás. Como no hay nada escrito, es entendido que hay un 0. Ok, now just plug them into the, um, to the equation. Alright, so negative B... B is negative 6. 2 times A is positive 1. Again, in this equation, A is 1 and B is negative 6. So I just substituted them into that formula. These two negatives become a positive. And 2 times 1 is 2. So the axis of symmetry is X equals 3. The equation for the axis of symmetry is X equals 3. La ecuación para el axis de symmetry es x igual a 3. Let me do another example. All right, look at the second example here. If I expand it, it will be this. Obviously, this part is not written because 0 times x is 0, and 0 plus 0 is 0. But if I expand it, that's, what actually, that's what's actually happening right here, okay? Si lo escribo de esta forma... Aquí te enseña que A es 1, B es 0, y C es 0. Ahora voy a substituir en esta fórmula. So I'm going to substitute them into the formula, and I'm going to have negative 0 over 2 times 1. 0 divided by any number equals 0. Okay? Remember that, because that's going to allow us to do this quickly for a whole mess of them. 0 divided by any number equals 0. 0 dividido por cualquier número te da 0. All right, so the axis of symmetry, the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals 0.
basically, whenever you see, <clears throat> sorry, whenever you see no no number in front of a, you know what? Never mind. I'm not even gonna say it because that's gonna confuse people. You'll realize what I was about to say as you do more problems. All right. All right. Let's look at this third example. A equals one. B equals positive six. C equals zero. So when I substitute them into the formula, I'm going to have x equals negative 6 over 2 times 1. So x equals negative 6 divided by 2. So x equals negative 3. So the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, so again, we got to find the equation of the axis of symmetry. So in this equation, A is negative 1, B is 0, and C is 1. Make sure you realize it. If I write it ex in an expanded form, it would be this. Negative x squared plus 0x plus 1. Please realize that. Please pay attention to what I'm writing to and understand why it's 0x. Zero, 0 times x equals 0. That's why it's not written there, okay? Por favor, pon atención a lo que escribí y, y compárenlo a lo que está escrito aquí. Okay? B es 0 porque 0 por x te da 0 y por eso que no está escrito en esta forma simplificada. All right, now, what did I say? That whenever, or I was trying to say that whenever B is 0, the axis of symmetry is going to be 0. Whenever B is 0, the axis of symmetry is going to equal 0 because 0 divided by any number will always equal 0. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. Okay, cuando B, siempre cuando B es 0, el axis de, de symmetry siempre va a ser 0. Porque 0 dividido por cualquier número siempre te da 0. All right, let's look at the second example on this page. A equals 1, B equals 0, and C equals 8. So again, whenever B equals 0, the axis of symmetry is going to be X equals 0. How do I know that? Because when I substitute those values, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get X equals negative 0 over 2 times 1. And 0 divided by any number always equals 0. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. Again, whenever b is 0, the axis of symmetry is 0. All right, let's go look at this one. Same situation. Sorry, sorry these are all the same, but IXL gave me a bunch of these. All right, so um, a is going to equal negative 3, b equals 0, and c equals negative 2 for this example. So when I substitute them into the formula, I have x equals negative b over 2a. Negative 0 over 2 times negative 3. So again, whenever b is 0, the axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals 0. All right? Hopefully you're finding that easy. Again, we're going to keep using that a lot. That's very important. In fact, we're going to use it on the next set of problems right here. Okay, so now we, we're going to have to find the vertex of the parabola. And again, I wrote in red what you have to do. Okay, to find the vertex of the parabola, first find the x-coordinate of the axis of symmetry, then substitute that value into the equation and solve for y. Oh my gosh, mister, that's too many words. That sounds complicated. All right, let me, let me walk you through it so you can see it's, it's not a big deal, okay? So look, I got to find the vertex. Okay, now remember before that I was telling you that the vertex... The x-coordinate of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. So that's the first thing I'm going to find using the formula for the axis of symmetry. Okay? Recuerden que yo le dije que para encontrar el axis de symmetry se necesita el coordinado de x del vertex. Así que eso es lo primero que voy a hacer. Voy a encontrar el coordinado de x para el vertex usando la fórmula para encontrar el axis de symmetry que es x igual a negativo b dividido por 2a. Okay, so I'm going to do that right here. First, let me find the axis of symmetry. 
So what is A in this equation? A equals 1. What is B? B equals negative 2. And what is C? We don't need it, but just, just in case, C equals 0. All right, so when I substitute those values, when I substitute those values, I'm going to get negative negative 2 over 2 times 1. Okay, cuando substituyo esos valores, en esta fórmula me da negativo, negativo 2 sobre 2 por 1. Those two negatives become a positive. Los dos negativos te dan un positivo. So it's going to be 2 divided by 2, which equals, sorry, I'm running out of space, but it equals 1. All right, okay, so the x coordinate of the vertex is positive 1. El coordinado de x para el vertex es positivo 1. Now to find the y coordinate, all you got to do, I'm going to erase that, all you got to do is substitute 1 for x into this equation and solve for y. I'll say it again. To find the y coordinate of the vertex, all I got to do is substitute this value for x into the equation and solve for y. Para encontrar el coordinado de y para el vertex, lo que tengo que hacer es sustituir este valor de x en esta ecuación y resolver para y. So when I do that, I'm going to have this. y equals 1 to the second power minus 2 times 1. Okay? 1 to the second power is 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. What's 1 minus 2? Negative 1. That's my vertex right there. Let me do another example. Okay, so again, find the vertex of this parabola. To first, I'm going to find the x-coordinate by doing x equals negative b over 2a. All right, so um, in this example, a equals 1, b equals 0, and c equals 34 over 5. Okay? So when I substitute those values into the formula for the axis of symmetry, I'm going to have negative 0 over 2 times 1. So the axis of symmetry is at x equals 0. That means that the coordinate of x for the vertex is 0. El coordinado para x del vertex is 0. Now to find the y coordinate of the vertex, all I got to do is substitute 0 for x into this equation. And it should be obvious what the y is going to be. If x equals 0, that means that y has to equal 34, whoops, 34 over 5. Si x es igual a 0, entonces y es igual a 34 sobre 5. All right, here's the, ne the next example. So again, we got to find the vertex. So my first step is I'm going to find the x-coordinate of the vertex by finding the axis of symmetry using the formula for axis of symmetry, which is negative b over 2a. Okay, el primer paso, encontrar el coordinado de x del vertex que es igual de que el axis of symmetry. Así que voy a usar esta fórmula para encontrar el axis of symmetry. All right, so in this equation, a equals 8, b equals negative 4, and c equals 9. When I plug in the values into the formula, I'm going to have negative, negative 4 over 2 times 8. Okay, negative, negative 4 becomes positive 4. 2 times 8 is 16, and when I simplify this fraction, I get 1 over 4. Cuando simplifico esta fracción, me da 1 sobre 4. Okay, now the next step is to substitute 1 over 4 into that equation to, uh, to solve for y. Okay, so I'm going to substitute 1 over 4 for x. Voy a substituir 1 sobre 4 para x. So y is going to equal 8 times 1 over 4 to the second power minus 4 times 1 over 4 plus 9. Okay, 1 over 4 to the second power is 1 over 16. 1 over 16 times 8 is 8 over 16, which you could obviously sim simplify to 1 half. Okay, here when I multiply negative 4 
times 1 over 4, I'll do it the slow way. I get negative 4 over 4, which is going to give me negative 1. And I got the plus 9 back here. Okay, now in order to add or subtract fractions, they all have to have the same denominator. So I'm going to change them all to have a 2 in the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to change this negative uh, 1 into negative 2 over 2. Why? Because negative 2 over 2 equals negative 1, and now it has a 2 in the denominator, so I can combine it with this one. And I'm going to change this 9 to have a 2 in the denominator by writing 18 over 2. How do I know that? Because 18 divided by 2 equals positive 9, and now they all have a 2 in the de denominator. So when I subtract 1 half minus 2 over 2, I get negative 1 half. And then negative 1 half plus 18 over 2 is 17 over 2. So um, my x coordinate is 1 over 4, and my y coordinate is 17 over 2. Yes, you're going to have fractions. Guess what? This is high school. Learn to deal with fractions. You can't escape them. All right, so again, my x coordinate was 1 over 4. I plugged it into the equation for x, and now I solved for y, and that's how I got uh, that y equals 17 over 2. El coordinado de x era 1 sobre 4, lo sustituye dentro de la ecuación para resolver para y que me dio 17 sobre 2. Okay, now we're going to find the minimum or maximum value of the parabola. Remember that I said that the minimum, it says it right here in red, okay? The minimum or maximum value of the parabola is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So basically, I'm going to do exactly what I just did in the, in the last couple of examples, and the answer will be the y-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, recuerden que yo dije que el valor mínimo o máximo del parabola es el coordinado de y del vertex. Okay, lo dije y lo enseñé en IXO BB1. Así que... Voy a hacer el mismo proceso que acabé de hacer en los problemas que acabé de hacer y la respuesta va a ser el coordinado de Y del vertex, okay? If you're lost, you need to make sure you've done BB1 or look at my explanation in BB1. But again, the minimum or maximum value of the parabola is the Y coordinate of the vertex. All right, so look at the first question. Find the minimum value of this parabola. All right, so A equals 1 b equals 3, and c equals 2. First, I'm going to find the axis of symmetry by using the formula for axis of symmetry, which is negative b over 2a. You should have it memorized by now. All right? If you're paying attention and doing some of the problems, you should have this formula memorized already. Ya deben tener esta formula memorizado hoy mismo. Okay, so now I substitute the values, and it's going to be negative 3 over 2 times 1. So it's going to be negative 3 over 2. All right, so the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 3 over 2. El coordinado de x del vertex es negativo 3 sobre 2. Now, but what I need is the y-coordinate of the vertex for my answer. So now I got to substitute negative 3 over 2 into the equation for x. Lo que necesito es el coordinado de y del vertex para mi respuesta. Así que ahora voy a substituir negativo 3 sobre 2 para x dentro de la ecuación. So now I got negative 3 over 2 to the second power, plus 3 times um, negative 3 over 2, plus 2. So that's going to give me y equals positive 9 over 4, plus, I'm sorry, minus 9 over 2, plus 2. Now again, in order to add them, they all got to have the same denominator. So I'm going to change them so I'll have a 4 in the denominator. Lo voy a cambiar para que todos tengan un 4 en el denominador porque es, solamente se pueden sumar o restar si tienen el mismo denominador. Alright, so this negative 9 over 2, I'm going to change it to negative... Um, hold on, I made a mistake. 18, I'm sorry, to negative 18 over 4 because when I simplify this fraction, it gives me negative 9 over 2. So they're equivalent. And 2 over 1, I'm going to change it 
to 8 over 4 because 8 over 4 is equivalent to 2. All right, now when I add the fractions, 9 over 4 minus 18 over 4 is negative 9 over 4. And negative 9 over 4 plus 8 over 4 is negative 1 over 4. And that's my answer. Ne the minimum value is negative 1 over 4. I'm just looking over my work, make sure there's no mistakes. Okay. Okay, and then let's look at the bottom example. They're asking for the maximum value of this parabola. So again, I need the y coordinate of the vertex. Necesito el coordinado de y de el vertex. So in this example, a equals negative 5 over 2 and b equals negative 5. So I'm going to substitute those values into the formula, negative b over 2a, and I'm going to have negative negative 5 over 2 times negative 5 over 2. So on the top, I'm going to get positive 5. On the bottom, these two can these twos cancel out, so I got negative 5, and 5 divided by negative 5 equals negative 1. All right, so the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative one, but I need, I need the y coordinate. Okay, so now I'm gonna substitute negative one for x. Voy a substituir negativo uno para x. So y equals negative five over two, negative one to the second power, minus five times negative one, plus 59 over 10. So that's gonna be Positive 1 times negative 5 over 2 is negative 5 over 2. This is going to give me positive 5 plus 59 over 10. So I'm going to change them to all have a 10 in the denominator. Because that's the least common multiple of 2, 1, and 10. So this fraction is going to change to uh, negative 25 over 10. This one is going to change to um, 50 over 10, and this one stays the same. So now when I add that from left to right, negative 25 over 10 plus 50 over 10 is positive 25 over 10. 25 over 10 plus 59 over 10 is going to be 84 over 10, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure. 25 over 10 plus 59, 25... Yeah, yeah, 84 over 10. And when I simplify this fraction by dividing the top and the bottom by 2, I'm going to get 42, whoops, 42 over 5 when I simplify it. Cuando lo simplifico me da 42 sobre 5. I don't want anyone complaining because there's fractions. Again, this is high school. You got to deal with fractions, period. Look at me, I had to work that out. Did I complain? No, I did it. That's what you gotta do too, all right? Fractions are a part of life, you gotta deal with them. All right, um, I have two more examples here. I think I'm almost done with this IXL. All right, so again, find the minimum value of this parabola. So in this one, A equals one, B equals negative one, and C equals negative five. When I sub substitute them into this formula, I'm going to get negative negative 1 over 2 times 1, so it's going to be positive 1 half. So the x coordinate of the vertex is positive 1 half, but I need the y coordinate of the vertex. So I'm going to substitute positive 1 half into this equation, and it's going to be y equals 1 half to the second power minus 1 half minus 5. So that's going to give you y equals 1 over 4 minus 1 half, minus 5 over 1. Let's change them to all have a 4 in the denominator. So this fraction, I'm going to change it to 2 over 4. And this fraction, I'm going to change it to 20 over 4 because 20 divided by 4 is 5. Now when I add them, 1 fourth, 1 over 4 minus 2 over 4 is negative 1 over 4. Negative 1 over 4 minus 20 over 4 is negative 21 over 4. And that is my minimum value, negative 21 over 4. All right, guys, that concludes 
this lesson for IXL section BB2. Remember, I highly encourage you to do these IXLs on time because I promise you it's going to get a lot more complicated. And your next algebra exam, as well as the Algebra 1 EOC, is loaded with these types of questions. So it's really important that you try your best to complete them because these are the easy ones. We're starting off with the easy ones, and later on it gets more complicated. So please try to do them on time. All right, that's it for today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next class. Take care.